Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Power Is Now Home Buyer Town Hall. My name is Eric Frazier. It's a beautiful day in Southern California, a great night, actually, to talk about home ownership. And that's what we do every first and third Tuesday night. We are live on Facebook talking about home ownership and down payment assistance and about markets. And uh, it's a great show with great information. And we are reaching out to everyone who is interested in making the American dream of homeownership. And we're using online media to do that. And so not only can you find our shows on Facebook Live, but also on the Powers Now Radio. It's a podcast available anywhere you get your podcasts. Also, you can find them on our website. Just go to thepowersnow.com and there you'll see uh, the Powers Now TV radio and magazines. My name is Eric Frazier and I'm the host of The Power Is Now. And in addition to being the host, I'm also a vice president and mortgage advisor with First Bank. First Bank is a national lender. We lend in 49 states. And so if you're watching this from anywhere outside of California, welcome to the show. And for those of you who are in California, well, we have a treat for you tonight. We're gonna to be talking about down payment assistance in California with the Golden State Finance Authority. Now, my license number is 461807. The views and opinions that I express on this show are my own and do not necessarily represent First Bank. But I want to encourage you to go to buyhomeseminars.com where you can see a series of homebuyer seminars that are conducted online. That's buyhomeseminars.com. In fact, we have quite a few coming up. We partner with real estate professionals that put on online seminars to educate consumers about down payment assistance and uh, and other programs that can make the again the dream of homeownership a reality. In fact, right now, uh, First Bank is putting on a series of seminars for real estate professionals. If you go to the powerisnow.com forward slash realtor seminars, you'll find uh, that we have a three-day event that's going on right now. In fact, the first event was today where we had uh, Carolyn Sansari, who was our guest tonight, uh, talking about down payment assistance. And we talked about the California Housing Finance Authority and their down payment assistance programs, which we'll talk about again tonight. And tomorrow at the same time between 9.30 and 12 o'clock, we'll be talking about portfolio lending at First Bank. That's interest only programs, that's, that's portfolio and jumbo programs. What are the guidelines to qualify for that? Now you can register for uh, the event tomorrow. Just go to thepowerisnow.com forward slash Realtor Seminars. And that's with a plural seminars, S. Uh, sign up, it's a Zoom meeting. So you have to be on Zoom. And so the registration link is there for Zoom to be in the room and to get this great information. And then the final night, we'll be talking about um, conventional government programs, VA, USDA, and we'll also be talking about home equity loans and lines of credit. And so if you're a real estate professional, you definitely want to go to thepowersnow.com forward slash realtor seminars. Well, tonight we're gonna to be talking about down payment assistance. And we have with us uh, Carolyn Sansari, uh, she is the Director of Marketing for the Golden State Finance Authority. And I'm going to have everybody, in fact, kind of introduce themselves briefly. And then we're going to get into our key topic tonight, and that is affordability in California. So let's start with uh, Carolyn Sansari. Carolyn, welcome to the show. Take a moment, introduce yourself to the, the crew and to our listeners. Hi, thanks everyone for having me on the show today. If we're going to be talking about affordability in California, it's a perfect opportunity to talk about down payment assistance with Golden State Finance Authority. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Carolyn. And, you know, the number one barrier is down payment assistance. And so uh, I'm excited, always happy to hear uh, what you have to say that Golden State is doing to help make the American dream a reality. Next up is uh, Jenny Gonzalez, Jenny G. I call her out of Corona. Welcome, Jenny, to the show. Thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure to be on as usual. I always love doing these home buyer seminar type things because it's so educational. And there's so many people out there that don't realize you really can still purchase a home. 
So if anybody's interested, my name is Jenny Gonzalez with Keller Williams Corona. My license number is 01249788. I've been licensed since 1998. And my cell phone number is 951-316-0374. And you can visit my website at jennygsellshomes.com. And I look forward to tonight's program. Jenny, thank you for your consistency. We can always count on Jenny to be on our home buyer town hall. And folks, if you're looking to buy or sell in Corona, I mean, nobody knows Corona better than Jenny G. Now, if you're looking to leave the state and people are leaving the state by the droves, I know somebody who uh, knows everybody in Arizona that has property for sale. And that's Yvonne McFadden. Nobody sells Arizona better than Yvonne McFadden. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. It is beautiful here. Our weather is fantastic. I'm Yvonne McFadden with Deluxe Realty. And my license number is SA0350430000. I do cover the Valley of the Sun. And thank you to The Power Is Now. I have a wonderful referral in Kingman, Arizona. Thank you, Eric. And they are doing exceptionally well. And it's just an honor to be on the show this evening and to be a VIP agent. Oh, my telephone number is 480-628-2619. And for all of you Californians that's moving here to Arizona, we have new builds and our home prices start in the high in the hundred thousands. The affordability in Arizona is incredible. And uh, uh, my only uh, challenge with Arizona is that it's hot. It's crazy hot out there. <laughs> That's what make it so exciting, the heat, because there's so many wonderful activities with, you know, all of our entertainment is outdoors with wonderful misters and you always have a swimming pool at hand, so it makes That's it true. very nice here. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I mean, I'm in California, and you know, I put on my jacket when it hits 68. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I definitely love the warm weather, uh, but Arizona takes you to another level. Now we're going to hear more from you, and also from Jenny, and also from Adrian Bates. Uh, she's out of Los Angeles, California. In fact, Adrian Bates and I are going to be doing a seminar on May 22nd, and hopefully we can uh, get her audio and video working so she can tell us all about it. Well, folks, we're going to be uh, having a great time tonight talking about real estate and talking about affordability of real estate. And I'm going to start with a report that just came out uh, from the California Association of Realtors. It actually came out in February, but there's so much information out there. It's hard to just keep track of it all. It's hard to stay abreast of it all. There's all kinds of research reports and, and, and information coming from a, a host of different real estate associations, both national, state, as well as minority real estate trade associations, including then the government from the FDIC to the housing finance agencies. And so uh, how do you keep track of it all? Well, it's challenging to do so. But when we get the information, we want to share it. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, we're going to start off with a home affordability. So here's a report that just came out again in February. And the California Association of Realtors uh, just put out a press release in, um, in February talking about the challenges that minorities in particular are facing when it comes to purchasing a home. And so they use the affordability index and this affordability index uh, basically measures how affordable purchasing a home is based on income and are also on race. So in this particular case here, the higher the percentage, the greater the affordability. And so if we look at California, and this is for single family homes, California, we can see that um, white Hispanic males are 38%. And then we have Asians, 43%. Latinos, uh, Latinx and Hispanics, 20%. And African-Americans, 19%. And so we have the lowest rate as African-Americans 
of affordability. Next would be Latinos and then Asians and California have the highest rate of affordability. And I was surprised to see that. And then whites uh, at 38. Now, if you look at condominiums, uh, it's a little bit better because condominiums are a little bit more affordable than single family homes. And so it's almost a 10% increase when it looks at when it comes to buying a townhouse or a condominium. Now, many people don't want to consider townhomes or condominiums because they're renting an apartment already. And the last thing they want to do is to buy an apartment. Well, I say get in where you fit in, right? And uh, find something that you own. Owning anything is better than renting. Now, when you compare this nationwide, uh, then the numbers are again improved. And one of the reasons why is because California is one of the most expensive states to live in. In fact, we are second. The number one state is New York. New York is where the affordability uh, rate is the lowest. Uh, it is very, very expensive to live in New York. And so, but look at this. When it comes to the nation, we're about 42%. Uh, and then uh, the um, the uh, uh, Asian or Latin, the Hispanic and Latino is 51, Asian 70, and uh, white non-Hispanic is 62%. Now, let me uh, show you the next slide here. And this shows the affordability, again, by race. And this shows the gap, right? And so there is a gap in affordability. And as a result of this, this is, uh, this is affecting uh, the ability of minorities to build wealth, because we all know that homeownership uh, is the number one driver of wealth. And so if there is a higher percentage of, uh, of uh, people unable to get into homeownership, we're going to see the wealth gap continue to rise. Uh, in fact, let me go to the next slide here. This shows really breaks it down in terms of numbers. When you look at what it takes in terms of medium income, the medium income to purchase a home, this is, a, uh, this is based, I believe, uh, on data for 2020. So the medium income in California is $94,000. Uh, for Asians, for whites, for Asians, 107, Latinos, 65, African Americans, 56. And so when they look at the income gap between whites, non-Hispanics, and Latinos is 28, for African Americans is 37. And so there simply isn't enough income uh, to fully participate in homeownership for Latinos and African Americans in California. Now, if you look at some of the other states, uh, some of the other cities, it's even worse. I mean, go down to San Francisco. To buy a home in San Francisco, the gap is 84,000 for Latinos, 115,000 for Blacks. And the reason why is because you've got to make 165,000, that's the medium household income, to purchase a home for white, non-Hispanic, for Asians, it's 106, for Latinos, 80,000, and for African Americans, it's uh, 49,000. So what a huge gap between comparing Blacks and Latinos with, uh, uh, and uh, let's see here, yeah, Blacks and Latinos and non-Hispanic whites to non-Hispanic whites, it's a pretty serious gap. So this is a this is this came out again recently from the uh, California Association of Realtors, and they're explaining you know why uh, housing affordability is impacting minorities, and it's primarily because the income is simply not there. So, uh, Jenny, are you shocked by these numbers? What do you think? No, I'm not shocked by the numbers um, at all. And it's something that I personally um, take into account when I am doing business. I actually do a lot of outreach and I try to um, include everybody in everything. And I think everybody else should too. Um, in, in our city in Corona, we're a melting pot, kind of like LA. We have a little bit of everything in here and Riverside is somewhat the same. But once you get into Orange County, you're going to find this disparity um, and, and some parts of L.A. County as well, you know, when you get up into the higher priced areas. So I definitely see this and I have had some clients that I've closed escrow with that, you know, are not white, 
and they are I treat them exactly the same I don't understand what the actual problems are um, I know that I have heard some things such as um, you know telling people to you know take personal pictures down from your walls when you're selling a home um, things like that which I do not agree with um, I think if you have a couple pictures of your family on your wall, that's your business and that's something that you have a pleasure to look at and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're plastering a hundred pictures on a wall, that's something else. Yes. Um, but you know, that's just certain things that are done that are not correct in our line of work. You know, Jenny, you bring up an interesting point uh, and what a great <laughs> segue uh, before I bring in Carolyn and Yvonne. Um, we are conducting right now a series called Fair Housing, the Fair Housing series, uh, The Power is Now. And I had an opportunity to interview Carolyn. She's part of that series. It'll be playing in a, in a couple of days. And we're talking about the low rate of homeownership uh, for particularly African-Americans and, and people of color. And let me just share this here. This screen uh, lays it out here uh, for African-Americans. Uh, this is just for California. It's 36 percent, 36 percent. Latinos is 41 percent. And the primary driver for this is that uh, the systemic racism and discrimination not allowing African-Americans and people of color to access housing right here in California and nationwide, actually, uh, to uh, because of race. And so they weren't able to take advantage of FHA. Uh, when they came back from the war in World War II, they weren't able to take advantage of the VA loan. And so between 1960, I believe in the early 60s, actually early 40s, 1940 to about 1968, less than 2% of uh, government loans were made to African-Americans. And this, these numbers reflect that legacy of discrimination. And so now today, uh, the few that are homeowners have to take down their pictures uh, in order to get their homes sold. Uh, so discrimination, here we are 53 years later, we're still dealing with discrimination and it makes the housing, uh, the the uh, Fair Housing Act even more important today than it has ever been. Carolyn, um, what do you think about these numbers? And let me remove the screen here. There is definitely a disparity. There's definitely challenges to this uh, that will continue. and. You know, I think when it comes to, you know, my role here at Golden State Finance Authority um, and, and our leadership team here as well, I think we're, we're strongly committed to increasing education to minority groups because access to affordability, access to down payment assistance is key um, to addressing, you know, the needs of a lot of minority groups and lower income families. and so this year, especially, we are doing a lot of initiatives to to work with organizations who are reaching minority mortgage professionals and real estate professionals, as well as um, doing a lot more education to home buyers in different within different different ethnicities. And um, that strong commitment is because we ourselves acknowledge that. We would like to see our numbers uh, rise as well in terms of how many, um, you know, the, the spread across ethnicities of our own um, company's business and how many people we're putting into home. And so it's, we're very much on board with this goal. And I think it's it just requires all of us in the mortgage industry to be proactive and address these challenges. Yeah, we discussed, I think a couple of weeks ago, how we aren't um, allowed to do buyer letters anymore with our offers and have pictures and stuff. And that's one of the reasons why is because of discrimination. So that we are ta they're taking steps, baby steps, and they're acknowledging what's going on. So hopefully that does help what's help the problem at least a tiny little bit. Yeah, something that seems so innocuous and I think comes from a good place of wanting to share the story with a with a seller it can be used against a, a you know a buyer it can end up being discriminatory and so I'm glad to see these these things getting addressed and some rules and regulations put around them too um, I'm sure that this is not the intent uh, at all but it is it's important to be careful on these things 
Yvonne, you are uh, the senior agent among the group right now. And I know you've seen everything. You've been selling real estate for well over 30 years, right? 32 years. And yes, yeah. I've seen it all. And I have to go back to uh, how Jenny said to take photos down. The reason that we that I ask my clients to remove photographs is because the prospective buyers get caught up looking at the personal photos. And I need them to focus on the home. And so it's important that I have them to remove, you know, a lot of their personal items, lock away medication, because it's, um, we're selling a home. And uh, have I seen the discrimination here in Arizona? Absolutely. Fair housing is really being taught every single day within mm -hmm. our they are there. We now have the advantage of speaking to the agents on different cultures because I'm finding I was in a transaction that I referred out to a commercial worker. And because of their cultural difference, he felt that he was being really disrespected for he didn't understand in their culture. That's how they interacted with people. So hmm. I had to step in and make him understand and apologize to wow. my clients because he went completely off the deep end. And as hmm. we had a conversation, it was obvious that he had only worked in a white world. He had never hmm. worked with another ethnicity of an individual. That's sad. Right. That's yeah. sad. And so those are the things that we're bringing forefront here in Arizona is to really make more friends. You know, I sit on the board of ARIA, Asian Real Estate Association of America. And the same thing, we're raising the awareness. We have a diversity seminar the 28th and 29th of this month at Nationwide with ARIA. Uh, Elizabeth Border says family pictures need to be removed so the buyers can envision themselves in that home. You know, there is a practical side of removing pictures. Uh, there's an innocence about doing a lot of things to position a home to sell, right? But, yes. you know, a good thing can be also uh, an evil thing uh, because there are those who have just a different intent all about it, you know? And also there's this kind of reality that we all have to face is that there are certain people who are going to judge us by the color of our skin and not by the content of our character, right? Uh, that's just, that's the world we live in. And we, uh, I think it's great uh, that you sit as an African-American on the board of the Asian Real Estate Association of America. I think that's awesome. You know, I've had the pleasure of sitting on boards of minority trade associations uh, and uh, but the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals and being involved with the Asian Real Estate Association of America. And so I think it's that type of open communication, collaboration, uh, all the various ethnicities that are real estate professionals joining each other's organizations, uh, making it truly an effort to uh, get to understand how can you get to know me if you're never involved in any of my organizations never participating in any of my seminars, not even trying to do business with any of my people, and, and yet you claim to embrace, you know, fair housing and, and equal opportunity. You know, the words need to match up with the actions. Now, we could go on and on about this, but we can't. We got to get to some uh, market information. And so uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Yvonne to go into more detail about what's going on in Arizona. Arizona is hot, folks. It really is. Uh, and it's hot just in, in more than just in heat. It's hot in activity as well. And so uh, we're going to uh, take a break. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome to The Power Is Now. Uh, please tell others we're live. We're having a conversation about real estate. We're going to be having a conversation about down payment assistance. Uh, we're just going to be having a conversation. So join the conversation. We'll be right back right after this.
Many Californians fear that they will not be able to pay their rent next month. Financial education and literacy are the catalyst for relief. So what resources are out there? A State of California program connects you with a HUD-certified housing counselor who can assist you on your financial education journey with no cost to you. Call today at 1-800-569-4287. Again, that is 1-800-569-4287. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Home Buyer Town Hall with your host, Eric Frazier. This is our Home Buyer Town Hall, and I want to encourage you to check out other opportunities to learn more about down payment assistance and various programs that can help you become a homeowner. You can go to buyhomeseminars.com and uh, register today for one of the seminars that are coming up. Uh, Seminars are happening all the time, and they are so convenient. They're live on Zoom, uh, so you can watch from the comfort of your home and office and get the information you need. In addition to seminars for consumers, we have seminars for real estate professionals. Uh, Right now, we are conducting a three-day seminar. Today was day one. They're from 9 to 12. If you go to thepowerisnow.com, forward slash Realtor Seminars, you can register for tomorrow's event that starts at nine o'clock. We'll be talking about portfolio lending. You know, interest only loans are really popular right now. They're coming back. Jumbo loans, people are taking advantage of low interest rates and buying million dollar homes. What are the guidelines? How do you qualify for programs like that? Uh, So we're going to be getting into those details. In fact, did you know that there are programs for doctors and lawyers High loan amounts, I'm talking 750 to a million bucks with only 5% now and no mortgage insurance. That's right. But you've got to be a doctor. you got to be a lawyer. you got to be a CPA. I'm going to get into all the details of these professional programs. So that's tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. sharp, live on Zoom. you got to be in the Zoom room to get the information. Go to thepowersnow.com forward slash Realtor Seminars. Well, every first and third Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we're live on Facebook, and I have the crew with me tonight, folks, and we've been chopping it up about discrimination, Fair Housing Act, and about markets. And next up is Yvonne McFadden, real estate extraordinaire, VIP agent on The Power Is Now. Nobody sells Arizona better than Yvonne McFadden. Yvonne, what's going on down there Um. in Arizona? There's lots going on, especially in the luxury market. Our luxury market has taken off to an all-time unprecedented place. I, I wish I had a crystal ball, but if you're selling a home over $2 million, you have five offers, cash, and there it's a bidding war. The escalation letters are all attached to your contracts now, and the highest bid some are $50,000 above the highest price with a cap on it up to 100000 So that's what we're seeing in our luxury market um, today. I mean, then that, that this just happened yesterday. I have a coming soon. Uh, I'll list it a bit under $2.5 million, And I'm already getting calls from realtors. And I'm, it's not ready to go live because we need to, you know, have it staged and have uh, several things done before I let the actual buyers through the door. But our luxury market is, it's unbelievable. It's, the houses are flying off the shelf. If it's not closed in 12 days under a hunt, under 2 million, then over a mil, over 2 million, you're looking at 67 days, but you're also receiving multiple offers. And in anything below a million, we're, we're stopped. We have their, the inventory is low. We're, we're just stopped. Uh, so we're waiting for things to happen. I look at the foreclosure notices. Uh, this year, uh, so, well, 2020, we had 3,100 foreclosure notices. In 2019, we had 5,500. I don't have the numbers for my 2021 as of yet, but I should have some stats on that by mid-year. So we're going to see a very different shift in the market. We're not going to see 
a decline in the market. It is a seller's market and it will continue to be a seller's market through 2022. So for those people sitting on the fence waiting, you're going to pay more. So get in the game now and earn that appreciation. And I must uh, share this with you. In the zip code that I'm speaking of, 85262, they're mm -hmm. receiving up to 35% appreciation. I did speak with another agent that sold a home the beginning of no, in December, and the house is already up $300,000 in this community. That That's is incredible. the market that we are experiencing right now. Yes. Now, I'm just I'm I'm shocked because I mean since when did two million dollar properties sell in in twelve days? I mean, are million dollar pro properties for that matter? And you're saying they're just essentially flying off the shelf at yes. luxury homes, and you're talking cash offers with all of them being made with escalation uh, clauses. Now, for the sake of our uh, listeners, you know, they may not know what an escalation clause is. Why don't you break that down for them? Well, what happens is if, if the property is $2 million, then and you have five offers and the one realtor gives you an escalation clause, what it means is they're willing to go over and above the highest offer submitted and you prove it by showing that you received that offer for 2.1 or 2.2, and then they cap how much they will go over. They Their letter could say, we're gonna go over $50,000, not to exceed another 100,000. So it just depends on how, how aggressive or you know motivated that buyer is for that particular property and the one home that i'm speaking about where they receive five offers one of the buyers he's going to go in and put another half million into this home so it's not like they're buying their ideal property they're going in and making these homes their own so that is the market that we're seeing here in arizona presently but it's it's active and it's fun because you're, the, the agents are actually really communicating. We're on the phones. If it's a coming soon, that coming soon already have contracts sight unseen. You know, but this is a problem though, because what about all the agents who are in line on the MLS, you know, put the property on the market and then give us all a shot at it, right? This is happening everywhere. I'm hearing this everywhere and I'm gonna bring in uh, Jenny, I know she has something to say about this in a second, but uh, I, I'm not surprised uh, at the million, two million dollar level. I mean, these guys have cash; they're operating this at another level. I mean, you buy a, a two million dollar property, and then you're going to put another five hundred thousand in it. You're yes. you're definitely uh, operating at another level. This is not a first time home buyer, right? <laughs> no, no. And we're starting to see uh, Bitcoin coming into the market as down payments. And so, I mean, it. so therefore, you know it's an ever shifting market if now you have Bitcoin coming in buying luxury properties because that Bitcoin, it, every day, you don't know what the value is. No, no, you're absolutely right. You know, well, that's uh, Jenny, what say you uh, to this uh, unique situation out there? In I Arizona? cannot believe in coming soon. I don't believe in it. You know, yeah. we're on our last offer. We put an offer in on a coming soon before it went live. And we went over and beyond. And they still wanted to put it live to get multiple offers. And this was my broker. Yes. So right. I'm still waiting a week yeah. later. So, well, you know, it, wasn't it a, I don't a, believe a, in the coming like, soon because you can't, you're not supposed to market it. You're not supposed to accept any offers except right. through your own brokerage or your own clients right. but everybody right. sees it so you're there you don't even have to take pictures inside a house i saw one there the inside of the house after and they on saturday they had all these showings they had to cancel them on saturday morning i saw the pictures on saturday afternoon i'm like why are all these people putting offers on a house they can't even see the inside of the house <laughs> so it's just well, that, that just speaks to the inventory situation, right? I mean, yeah. come on. what what's driving that in your area? Is it just inventory, or is it just 
a lot of people. We have a lot of people with their leases coming up, and they need to get into homes. The same thing that is going on with us. You know, you you have a time where you have. To, sometimes you have to move or else. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, go ahead. And in go. our market, in our market, these are buyers moving into Arizona. These mm-hmm. are not really buyers that are here. I have a few that are in over a million, and uh, they're at a million and a half. I, at this time, I can't find them anything. There's nothing available. Uh, so, what about first-time home buyers? I mean, is there any inventory in the three hundred, four hundred thousand yes. range yes. in your area? Yes, yes, there there is inventory, although you're still looking at multiple offers. But you do have in the affordable median income and your first time home buyers are being very well cared for. I have to really point that out. The loan officers that are working with first time home buyers, they are cradling them. They are making sure that they are getting in these houses. So I'm impressed with them working so hard and diligently and the agents that are getting those contracts accepted. You may wow. have to go over or above. You may have to give some dinners or you may have to do some other things. You have to be creative. You yes. must be creative in this market. Wow. Wow. Man, Arizona, is it's hotter than I thought. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, any final comments about the Arizona market and uh, any call to action for anyone looking to sell? Well, I would love to have listings and actually uh, I'll be working with a coach on listings because uh, that's that's where you really have to go back to basics, Eric. Mm-hmm. If you don't go back to your basics, then I don't believe you're going to survive this market. And last year was bang up. I mean, we did an incredible market last year and this market is even going to be better, but you better put your creative hat on because yeah. other than that, you're going to be sitting on the sidelines trying to figure it out. And that's not a good place to be in any commission market. No, I understand. And um, you're right. Um, and you constantly have to be looking uh, for looking ahead, right? You see where the market is going. Uh, right now, uh, there's a report put out by the CFPB that said that 2.7 million people are making their payments, haven't made their payments for a year, they're in some type of foreclosure or forbearance situation. They kicked the moratorium to the end of the year, and now uh, we're looking at the first of the year, uh, possibly a changing market uh, where inventory may not be as low as it is right now, and we'll see opportunities uh, for more affordability for first time home buyers. Uh, I don't think the millionaire buyers, though, are going to have anything to worry about. But uh, in fact, they may be more of a challenge uh, if this does happen. If more inventory comes, they may be more of a challenge to uh, other first-time home buyers, and that they'll be buying up all the uh, more less expensive homes as investment properties, like what happened in two thousand and eight. Well, I, I need to point something out to you. That's one thing about um, the the sellers. If they're taking primary or second homeowners the Mm -hmm. investors they're not because we've been we've been down that road before with investors and and so and and the neighbors are saying to their sellers please do not sell to an investor you know Mm. we you know in 2008 it wasn't a pretty picture and so the sellers are really being good about looking at a family and going down that road and working with these families. So that's what I'm impressed by seeing that they're working with their first time home buyers. You know, if I were to sell my home, I would uh, I would definitely be looking to sell it to someone who's going to live in the property. Yes. And uh, hopefully this is a trend we'll see more of as people realize that uh, at one time, you know, they were first time home buyers and they needed a, a leg up, right? And on right. top of that, now, being able to buy something uh, and it stay, you know, still being priced reasonably, because I believe that a seller, even though he can sell it at fifty thousand above market, doesn't nearly have to do that if he doesn't really need the money. But I also know that you know, in the game of real estate is about maximizing value. As a real estate listing agent, 
that's the fiduciary responsibility you have to find a way to maximize maximize uh, the seller the seller's profit or or value in getting that home sold. Well, Yvonne, uh, thank you for sharing uh, what's going on in Arizona. Uh, let's move now to Jenny and Riverside, where uh, perhaps we won't uh, find too many uh, 12 day, $2 million listings, right, Jenny? <laughs> Corona? No. Yeah. Well, actually, um, it's actually. Our million dollar homes were quite the thing a month or two ago and maybe in December, but I think most of the inventory is gone on the million dollar homes. If I can um, share this screen on our um, thing sure. here, there we go. So we have gone up just a little bit. We went from 699 average list price up to 719. So it's about $20,000. We went up to from 299 to 304 on a per square foot. But what I want to show you is over here, 11% decrease in price and 9% increase. So there's a little fluctuation there because people just don't know what to list their homes for. Quite literally, you can have on the same street, you can have a home that's listed for, let's say, um, uh, I'll just take a, an instance in another city, 379 for one home. It's got 2000, almost 2000 square feet with a pool and a side yard. And then you go down the street to a 1400 square foot home that needs windows and paint and just has a yard. And they're asking for 410. So there really is no sort of reasoning on pricing right now in Corona. That's all I have to say. I want to point something out. What we've been talking about rent. We're now up to $2,800 a month in our average rent in Corona. Wow. That is absolutely unbelievable. We were talking $2,500 a month last year. Yeah, actually, was it last month we were talking about that? Um, we, we talked about the previous year. Yeah, we've gone up $300 in the last year just in rent. That's amazing. Yeah. So it is a seller's market. Like I said, if you have if you have a home to put on the market, you know, I personally do not like coming soon. I believe in getting everybody the opportunity to look at the home, whether it's virtually or in person via scheduling appointments and getting everybody their due because the coming soon and and agents taking the offers and calls prior to them if they are not their own clients or they're not in their own brokerage as we are supposed to do i just think it's a disservice to all the buyers out there um, we just need to go back to active pending and sold you know mm -hmm. like this active under contract a buyer sees the active under contract and they don't understand that that's in escrow but they understand that if it's pending, it's an escrow. So the terms are very confusing for buyers. Jenny, I was just running the numbers. Um, a four hundred thousand dollar house in Corona, at today's interest rate, uh, almost uh, actually rates have dropped a little bit. They're under three percent again on a conventional loan. Uh, the payment at three point one two five APR three point six two five is twenty five seventy nine. 2,600 bucks, that's everything. Principal and interest taxes and insurance, and that's with 12 grand down, that's 3% down. I mean, Well, you can get a first time home buyer can get into a, a decent house for about 535 right now. That's about wow. an entry level home, zero days on market. Wow, add, add down payment assistance, which Carolyn's gonna talk about, and that's a home run for, yeah. um, for anybody right now with rates still very and they low. are taking fha offers now again i think enough of us made a stink that about um agents saying that they weren't going to take fha offers that i think right. things are changing i actually talked to an agent today and all the offers they had were fha offers and that makes me smile that just makes well, me smile the reason why is because fha just provides more flexibility on a conventional loan, your maximum debt ratio is 50%, uh, whereas FHA can go to as high as 56.9. I 
All right, and then FHA is more flexible on FICO scores versus conventional loans. Uh, even with down payment assistance, uh, you know, uh, a middle score of 660 is still not great credit, right? And yet no. you can I get think if you have a credit score of 680 to 700, call Eric to get this done and you guys need to get in now. I, ha I have a lot of relationships with a lot of people and that's the only way I think that people are gonna get in right now is via relationships at this point. It, it's just a relationship game. It really is. Um, so rents are 2,800, prices are still high, inventory is low. Can you tell me something new? <laughs> well, our weather is still really strange. It was 90 degrees yesterday and it's going to be in the 60s tomorrow. So who knows what to wear, right? But it's beautiful here. And, you know, it's really pretty because all the blossoms are out with the trees and i'm gonna have to take pictures and share because it's like so beautiful right now i have a balcony that just oversees everything and it's just so beautiful outside you know i tell you they're gonna bury me in california and i'm originally from tennessee I, I the weather out here is unbelievable the only other place that i wouldn't rather be would be arizona no i'm just kidding yvonne <laughs> You know, you know, I have a question about what you and Jeannie were just talking about. Um, the DTI, it, it's on their gross. It's not on their right. net. Yeah. That's right. So we, we really have to be careful when we're working with these first-time home buyers that they truly understand this and that we're not leveraging them out of a, a comfortable lifestyle. And, and okay. that's one thing that, that, you know, when I'm working with first time home buyers, I really stress mm -hmm. that. I said, you, I, I need you to be comfortable. I don't mm -hmm. want you worried about your payment every month because right. the goal is to get you in this home and think of generational wealth. Well, if I put you in there and I match you out and now you're strapped with food or clothing or whatever, you know, entertainment, yes, you have a home, but come on, don't don't you want to have one? You want to be able to breathe. And so that's where we come in as educators with our first time home buyers as well. Now, you're talking about uh, debt ratio and numbers. I'm going to bring Carolyn in here on this conversation because I, I, I agree with you and that, um, you know, DU and, you know, who knows what the algorithm is and what's in the black box that gives you that approval at a 56.9 or 55% back in ratio, but it's happening. And, um, and it is based on the gross. Uh, but I would rather see a person max out on buying a home they own than to um, pay rent, I would. And I'd rather see a person if they can, if they can reduce their, their uh, payment, if they can buy something and, and get their debt ratio down to 45, maybe 50, uh, then they can get down payment assistance. So they have the best of both worlds of maybe, you know, being stressed a little bit on the payment, but having money in the bank. And I know we've talked about this, that the money in the bank is perhaps the greatest reason why they can't get in in the first place. And then if you get in exhausting all of your funds, is that really a better position to be in as opposed to having a high ratio? Yeah. I mean, I think that there is a sweet spot and it, and I think it depends on each borrower's situation. You know, there, there are situations where a borrower is funneling that much money to a landlord and it's not getting them anywhere in terms of anything down the road. We are in a market with extremely low interest probably going to continue like that for a while. And so is now the time to take that leap into home ownership so you can start building equity, building wealth down the road. You know, mm -hmm. at, at the same time, Golden Finance Authority doesn't want to put people in properties that they really can't afford or in situations right. they can't afford. And so we're a slight bit more conservative sometimes on our debt to income ratio. For example, on our platinum program, our debt to income rate on an FHA transaction go up to 50%. They don't go up as far as 
a standard FHA mortgage debt. Um, right. And that's because, you know, there is a element of our organization that wants to ensure that we're being responsible in our lending as well. And so I think it, was, it comes down to what Jenny said, it's relationship. I always need to take time, get in contact with a good real estate agent, start working with a loan officer and looking at their individual situation and deciding what is the right fit for them. And it might even need some prep time. I mean, how many people, how many times have we been on this show talking about low inventory in California, right? Rising prices. And yet we've also had people on the show testimonial from actual customers who in this last year have purchased homes, their first homes, and in this market, been with not being able to, you know, see properties as easily with COVID requirements. You're right. They, and some of them have even taken four months, six months, right, Jenny, to prepare themselves credit-wise to have a high enough credit score to qualify for that mortgage. I, what I can say is it is Starting, you don't start, you're never going to get anywhere. So, you make those relationships, you reach out to a loan officer, you look at your situation, what you want to accomplish, and decide from there. And when it comes to down payment and closing cost assistance, which is kind of the specialty of the state finance authority, it's about helping people get into a property and get it into home ownership sooner than they might have thought possible because they're not having to build that savings for years and years and years, and they can take advantage of this market right now. Wow. You know, uh, you have said it all there, and it is it is a balance, right? It is a balance between, um, you know, having the money and being able to act now, leveraging down payment assistance. And then that also may mean uh, that you don't buy the house you really want because you want to keep your ratios in line so that you can qualify for down payment assistance. At the same time, if you don't need down payment assistance and you and you have you want to stay close to work and you and you it's important to be you know in a particular neighborhood. Uh, I rather see you stretch your dollar uh, and and just get in if you can at that higher ratio. Uh, so I think that you're both right. <laughs> yeah. I know personally, a, a lot of times when I meet with clients and a lender at the same time, we bring up the word, what are you comfortable with, with a payment? Mm -hmm. And I know I use that with my clients because a lot of times they get the approval and they're approved up to so much. And like the hub, husband will say, yeah, you know, we're going to go spend this much. And the wife who the budgeter is like, no, we need to stay in payment right here because, you know, we need to save. You know, just like I told you I had done with my son, we knew what payment he needed to have. Right, for a whole right, year, right. he saved for his down payment and everything else. And I talked to him. He called me on Friday for like an hour and a half. But he, he's telling me, he's like, he's saving him. He's still saving up to $800 a month from his paychecks into his savings account because he got the correct rate. He got the correct payment. He doesn't have the debt. He, he's doing everything the way he's supposed to. And he doesn't have to drive that commute anymore. He went closer to work. So he's only, instead of having to get gas twice a week, he's going every three weeks. So that's right. saving him money. So there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a lot you need to dive into. Like I said, it took a year for us to get him where he needed to go from start to finish. Well, uh, Jenny, uh, Daniel is a smart kid. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. It was great working with him, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm so happy that uh, he's not only a homeowner now, but he's putting away that much cash. Uh, you know, uh, saving money is a priority, and when you are a homeowner, right? It is anything can happen. And Especially because he's a teacher, and he's going to have that two months. He's not going to, even though he already saves and puts money away in a certain account for that. Right. He right. still doesn't want to have to go into there if he doesn't have to. Yes. And that's the smart way to go about it, I think. Right. No, you're absolutely right. Jenny, any final uh, words uh, about Corona uh, and a call to action uh, as we transition to our final step? And we're saving the best for last. Uh, right, Carolyn? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any final comments about the market and Corona? 
The market is fantastic in Corona. We need listings really badly. Yes, I will take your listing and I will put on coming soon if you want it. But if you want true buyers that truly want your home, you need to put it live and you need to let people actually see it. For buyers, if you're looking to buy, give me a call. I am the relationship person. I've been doing this for over 22 years in this city, and I know pretty much every realtor. And I can reach out to them and let them know what it is that I need. I'm with Jenny Gonzalez with Keller Williams Corona. My license number is 01249788. My cell phone number is 951-316-0374. And my website is JennyGSellsHomes.com. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you, Jenny. Now, uh, Yvonne, final call to action, uh, final comments about Arizona. Well, Arizona is hot, as you said, in more ways than one. And we have several new builds. DR Horton is doing a bang up job. We have Lennar. Um, we have a lot of new home builders and several new cities are coming. So things are gonna be great. I'm Yvonne McFadden with Deluxe Realty. My telephone number is 480-628-2619. I look forward to serve you, and this is a great place to raise a family or just come and enjoy. We have a wonderful resort town here, and I believe everyone that comes, they truly feel like they're on vacation. Thank you, Yvonne. Well, there you have it, folks. The market update from two extraordinary real estate professionals. Next up is the fabulous Carolyn Sansari, Director of Marketing for the Golden State Finance Authority. We're going to take a break. Get ready for down payment assistance. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics latest market updates and trends. The panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. And we are back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Homebuyer Town Hall with your host, Eric Frazier. We're in the final segment of this evening, and folks, every first and third Tuesday night, we're talking about home ownership. We're talking about real estate. We're talking about financing real estate, and we're talking about down payment assistance. And I am so happy that we have a great working relationship with the Golden State Finance Authority. They have been consistently available to us on the first and third Tuesday night dropping serious knowledge about down payment assistance, and I appreciate it so much. Uh, the down payment assistance program uh, with uh, Golden State is so unique uh, because it just has so many special characteristics that separate it from its competition. And they don't really consider themselves having a lot of competition. I'm going to ask Carolyn about that. There really isn't any competition when you're talking about helping people to become homeowners. And Carolyn, I know you agree with that, right? Is there really competition? You're just, we're all in this together, right? <laughs> That's how I look at it. You know, we have another wonderful agency, Cali Chafe, which is the state agency that also provides down payment assistance programs. Golden State Finance Authority has been doing this for about 28 years. There's a place for all of us. There are down payment assistance through some of the banks or through other lenders. There are programs, uh, especially for first time home buyers that are in counties and local communities. But there is a need to bridge this affordability gap, help people who don't have the cash resources for down payment. And so I feel that there's a place for all of us here. And it's really talking to that loan officer who is familiar with these programs to help you determine which is the right fit. Because some of them, it's about FICOs and debt to income ratios, and what you're qualifying for. Some of it is about what you're trying to accomplish. And some of it is about whether or not you want to be paying that money back. You know, there are nuances to all of the programs. But when you work with lenders who are participating in these programs, who are uh, knowledgeable, for example, First Bank, 
um, you know, then you're working with a loan officer who has access to multiple programs and can decide what's the right fit for you. No, you're absolutely right. And I, I believe, you know, having been at this for 40 years and, um, and specializing with first time home buyers, I think it's a specialty. There's so many, there's credit overlays, there are guidelines around the different down payment assistance and some do things that, that others don't. And it truly is a specialty, I think. And I, that may be the reason why, Carolyn, a lot of uh, you know, banks have the product, but many of their loan officers just aren't willing to uh, make that commitment in time uh, to, to really own it, to be able to talk about it like they like their bank is actually doing it, you know? And uh, I know that's the case for me. I, I, I love down payment assistance. I didn't get down payment assistance when I bought my first home. I really wish I had. I didn't know anything about it. Had I known about it, I would have used it. And that is the number one thing I hear. I ask every single client, Carolyn, I promise you, every single client I talk to, I'm the first person telling them about it. Never heard of it. Never heard of down payment assistance programs or never heard of Golden State Finance Authority. Yeah, it's it's the challenge is is getting this education out there. And so this I hope is a recorded session as well. Yeah. But we we are we are participating in these town town halls on the first and third Tuesday nights. Um, Golden State Finance Authority is also participating in the home buyer seminars that First Bank is putting on as well. Um, and those are streamed, I believe, through Zoom and recorded and replayed as well. Um, we have some video series on our website that you can share with friends, family, send to people to help them understand how these programs work. And we can continue to educate people. It's too many people don't realize that down payment assistance is easy, it's accessible, and it's here. Um, today, when I talk about our program, mm -hmm. you suggested that maybe I put some visuals out there. So yes. I'm gonna try some technology tonight. There's just a couple of um, slides, but it will put something in front of our audience to visualize while I'm talking. Um, so let me see if this will work. Now, while you're doing that, uh, Carolyn, I just wanna say that, um, I had uh, such uh, an incredible time uh, producing these videos with you that are on the Golden State website, also on thepowersnow.com. And folks, if you, uh, Carolyn won't have time tonight to get into all the details, although I do my best to interrogate her every time she speaks, um, you can go to the website, the Golden State Finance Authority's website. You can go to thepowersnow.com. Uh, and you can watch the videos. We talk about Open Door. We talk about the Platinum Program in great detail. I'm talking, they're 45 minutes to an hour, right, Carolyn? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's they're, they're very comprehensive and, and it's not too deep. Um, I think it's it's geared towards helping a home buyer kind of understand how the program works. Um, but it's, it's a great uh, present. Those are great videos. They're they're posted on our website. You can go there and watch them as well. Let me go ahead and start this. Let's. So the first thing I'd like to just mention is uh, that Golden State Finance Authority has been doing business in California for 28 years, and to put in front of you some numbers on this, 82,200 families have been helped to achieve home ownership. And the amount of down payment assistance that we've provided is $618.8 million. That's a lot of money put out there to help people purchase Amazing. homes. It's a lot yeah. of money. But this is, this is a great visual for how it actually works. And I've used the kind of the maximum loan amount, first mortgage loan amount that we can finance through our down payment assistance programs here. And that's that middle number. 548,250. And by utilizing one of our down payment assistance programs in this example, it would provide 5% in assistance to the home buyer. That is $27,412. Now that's enough in that orange box on the side, you'll see it's enough to cover the required down payment and still provide them another $10,000 to use towards closing costs. 
And that would put a maximum purchase price on that house of 575,000. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to finance a $575,000 purchase. You know, no. our average loan amounts in California are around 350,400 and that's because there's a lot of other areas outside of the Inland Empire area that get a little bit more affordable up through the valley, um, especially um, in the greater Sacramento area. I see those lower prices, um, but this would be our maximum lo mortgage loan amount, 548,250. But I think $27,000 being provided by an agency to help you cover your down and closing costs is amazing. And you know, the next slide I wanted to put on here was just a couple of testimonials because this second one here, Edwin Miranda, they just purchased a home in February of this year in San Joaquin County. Um, they were renting in the San Jose area. And this is during COVID and they were able to utilize our down payment assistance program, put their kids into a place that they felt was more safe. That was within distance of him traveling for work. And, you know, these other two examples are people who got $13,000, $18,000 in assistance through down payment assistance programs from Golden State Finance Authority. You know, and this is this is happening all the time. And I think that there's a lot of myths around down payment assistance programs. And so since we can't get into all of the details tonight and the guidelines of everything, let me just share some of the flexibility of the products. Most people think that down payment assistance is only available to first time home buyers, but the Golden State Finance Authority programs don't have that requirement. You do not have to be a first time home buyer to get down payment assistance. Another myth that down payment assistance is only for low income families or people that have exceptional credit but we're able to do FICO scores down as low as 620, debt to, in, debt to income ratios of 45%, in some cases up to 50%. And there's also that misnomer that it only works or down payment assistance is only available with FHA loans, but we have VA loans, USDA loans, where you can use the assistance towards your closing costs or to lower the principal on the mortgage since those two products or those two loan types don't require a down payment. And we have conventional financing as well. And then I think a lot of people are concerned since we're in this tight market, if they qualify for a down payment assistance program, or if I have a borrower who uh, you know has put an offer on my property with down payment assistance, is this harder for them to qualify for? Is it going to take longer? Is it gonna slow down escrow? And I'd just like to share that when it comes to Golden State Finance Authority's programs, we delegate that responsibility of qualifying the borrower to the lender. And we set those things like interest rates and minimum FICO scores and debt to income ratios, but the lender knows that going in, once that they, lock in the interest rate on the product once they get that commitment letter of how much in down payment assistance will be provided to the borrower at the closing table they continue along the loan process on their normal timeline we don't require the file to be sent to golden state finance authority for review we're not going to slow down escrow that offer with a program that has down payment assistance attached to it is just the same as getting an FHA loan or a conventional loan without down payment assistance. The difference is just that they're working with an agency who is combining a first mortgage product with down payment assistance. And the only other guidelines I wanna to share tonight since we can't get into everything is that this is available for owner occupied primary residences and then how attractive the down payment assistance is for our platinum program. This is one you mentioned a little earlier, how it comes as a gift. So up to 5% is available in down payment assistance for certain occupations. These ones pictured here on the right, law enforcement, firefighters, emergency medical technicians, medical and healthcare workers, 
anyone who works for a school, they can qualify as a musician as a gift on the first day. For all the other borrowers, it's provided as a second mortgage with, with zero interest on it, doesn't accrue any interest, and it's forgiven after three years. And I think that's one of the most attractive features of Golden State's Platinum Program is that at some point after three years, maybe on day one, that assistance that was provided, it has $15,000, $20,000, $30,000, it gets for Carolyn, we may uh, be uh, having some difficulty hearing you. Um, oh, no. But, um, I mean, you're, you're sounding better now. You're sounding better now. Um, you know, what I, uh, I tell you, the Platinum Program uh, is, uh, you know, my go-to program. Uh, and as you know, I offer both uh, Cal FHA and the Golden State. And the primary difference between those two is the loan amount. Uh, but it gets a little bit more deeper in that uh, your money uh, is forgiven uh, in cases that you just mentioned with first responders immediately. Uh, and if you're not a first responder, then it's forgiven over a three-year period, one-third at a time. Uh, I, I don't know very many organizations, both nonprofits or counties or cities, that forgive the money. And uh, to me, that is a big game changer because uh, you make a comment, in fact, in the last presentation, that essentially that becomes equity, right? Right. Yeah, they're starting to build that equity from day one because all that money that was put down doesn't have to be repaid um, or at either immediately or after three years, which means they're they're gaining equity in that property the longer they stay in it. The other benefit that I think um, is a differentiator with uh, Golden State and other uh, down payment assistance programs is that you will allow to buy multiple units. And so maybe because of your loan limit of 548250, you can't find a four unit building, but there's a good possibility you can buy a two unit or a three unit at that price range of say 577 and, and get some help with the mortgage payment. Yeah, it's another great way to utilize the property itself as an investment and to help you pay for that mortgage. Um, we've had some guests on the show that have done that, that have bought uh, four unit properties, I think. And and it's been amazing to watch, uh, you know, them build, build a future, build wealth through their own residence. Um, yes. But again, one unit, two unit, three units, up to four units could, could still qualify through the down payment assistance programs. And it may may mean it's through um, an FHA transaction, I believe. But that's yeah. where a loan officer can kind of take a look at at what's right for you. Now, uh, four units can be acquired through an FHA or VA uh, transaction, and um, uh, you know, conventional loans require twenty five percent down. Whether you're a first time home buyer or not, you got to come up with twenty five percent down. So, uh, to be able to get any help at all, I think is a is a big deal. Um, there was one other thing that I, I thought was unique about your program, um, and that is the uh, the ability to let's see four units. I talked about the four units. There's one other thing that that I that I always point out to. So this forgivability aspect is not just all in the end of three years. It's 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 forgiven almost immediately. So if you don't qualify. Uh, for it to be forgiven day one as a grant. And by the way, as a grant, it never gets recorded, right? So if you qualify as a police officer, teacher, first responder, it is a grant. It's described as a grant. But if you're not, it is a loan and it's recorded as a second trustee, correct? Correct. So it would it's actually recorded as a gift on the closing docs or on the, the statements. Um, and that would, again, just to clarify those occupations, it's anyone who works in medical and healthcare, anyone who works in law enforcement, whether that is a police officer or that's administration and staff, support staff, um, anyone who works for a school, public or private. And uh, that means anyone, not just teachers, but administration, support staff, yard duty, people who take care of the property, et cetera. And I think I'm missing one, um, firefighting, anyone who works for a fire department. Um, those people, those occupations, the down payment assistance is a gift on the first day. We're given immediately. 
For anyone else, it's forgiven after three years and proration along the way. So one third is, is forgiven after year one, another third after year two, and at the end of three years, all of the assistance is forgiven. Yeah, I, I spoke with a client earlier this week who was an administrator for the school, not a teacher, and um, she was shocked that she could uh, get the money for free. Well, uh, Carolyn, I know that uh, our time has been well spent and uh, we have been working hard all day today. And so I appreciate you being with me this morning. And again, this evening, you're on overtime, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> talking about uh, the Golden State Finance Authority down payment assistance. Uh, folks, I want to encourage you to go to the Golden State website where you can watch a more detailed presentation by yours truly and Carolyn. Uh, talking about the down payment assistance program uh, called Platinum and also Open Door. And then an incredible story about Greg and Christine Jefferson, who I'm telling you of our series so far, that's been my favorite show. Yes, and I just want to remind everyone the website URL. It is www.gsfahome.org. And we also have a Facebook page, so you can uh, get to the videos through there. You can get to them on our website. And again, you can share them and distribute them. And join us for one of the home buyer seminars that we have coming up as well. And maybe Eric, you can leave that. After I leave, you can kind of leave people with how to register for a home buyer seminar as well. Yeah, so uh, Carolyn is going to be always with us, I hope forever. I hope forever. Uh, talking about Golden State Finance Authority, go to buyhomeseminars.com, buyhomeseminars.com, and you can register for uh, one of the upcoming events. Uh, we have a series of first time home buyer, our home buyer seminars, because you don't have to be a first time home buyer to take advantage of, the, of many of the programs. But at buyhomeseminars.com, you can register. It's a Zoom. A webinar. So you've got to be in the Zoom room to get the information and um, ask your questions and, and just get started. Also, if you want to get started now, or if you want to meet with me or Carolyn, go to neverbeenagain.com, neverbeenagain.com, and you can either uh, schedule a time, uh, let me know the notes so you want to talk with Carolyn, or you can get started with the application right there at neverbeenagain.com. Well, this has been another great show. I see that uh, Yvonne is still with us. I'm going to bring her in. Yvonne, thank you so much for uh, joining us, telling us about hot Arizona. Nobody sells uh, Arizona like Yvonne McFadden. And I you, have, Carolyn, I, have, I have a quick question for Carolyn. Oh, so, Carolyn, great. if they work in the hospital, can they be an ad? Can they be in the administration in an office, or they have to be medical? Is anyone who works for a, for a medical or healthcare organization. So yes. as long as they are employed by the medical or healthcare uh, company, they would qualify for the down payment assistance as a gift. Great question, thank you. Thank you very much. It's just like with the schools, right? So you don't yeah. have to be a teacher. You can be a janitor, you can be a principal, you can be an administrator, you, can, you don't have to be just a teacher. Wow, you know, we are changing lives, folks by providing this information and uh you know everything you do online is forever anyway right so why not leverage it so we're going to be playing this again next week same time seven o'clock you can watch this for those of you who are watching right now let your family and friends know that there's some great information happening right here on the power is now home buyer town hall well, this is a, a wrap, and uh, I enjoy conducting these uh, interviews with uh, these real estate professionals and with uh, these lending professionals like uh, Carolyn Sansari. Folks, if you appreciate the information, drop us a note. Let us know. Uh, like us on Facebook. Put something in the chat room. Drop us an email, and I'll be happy to forward it on to uh, Carolyn, call me, email me at eric.frazier, thepowersnow.com, or 714-475-8629, my direct number. And of course, if you want to get started on uh, just want to learn what your purchasing power is or what you have to do to improve your credit so you can take advantage of down payment assistance, just reach out to me. Go to uh, neverrenagain.com, 
or apply to buy now.com, start the application, and let's connect. Now, I have a mobile app, and this mobile app is fantastic. It has a link to both the California Housing Finance Agency, the Golden State Finance Agency, with their particular programs and guidelines. It has a mortgage calculator. It has the loan limits for uh, FHA, the loan limits for conventional loans. It has everything there. In fact, you can even watch this show from that mobile app, or the Powers Now Home Buyer Town Hall, or Real Estate Roundtable, uh, and listen to our podcasts or read our magazines. It's everything right there on the mobile app. How do you get it? Just go to qualify to buy now dot com qualify to buy now dot com will take you to the landing page put in your cell number and uh, before you know it you'll have a text with that mobile app link download it from the play store or from the apple store and we are connected i certainly hope you'll do that so we can connect and talk more about homeownership and down payment assistance now uh, this week in fact for the rest of this month the powers now will be conducting a fair housing seminar or a fair housing series where I'll be interviewing industry leaders about fair housing and particularly the 1968 Fair Housing Act. And uh, Carolyn Sansari was one of those industry leaders that I interviewed and uh, her show will be coming up here in the next couple of days. But tune in at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time live on Facebook. You can watch this series on fair housing, fair housing. It is a right, it is the law, and everybody should have the right to live where they want to live if they can afford it, and to achieve the American dream of ownership without discrimination. And that's our goal here is to be uh, the voice leading the conversation in real estate about homeownership and providing information, resources, and tools where everyone can make the dream of homeownership a reality. Well. Remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. The power is now. Thank you for joining us. The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, real estate, and programming guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Home Buyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introductions. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, The Power Is Now program guide e-magazine, The Power Is Now national e-magazine, article writing and blogging, social media content customization, inclusion and press releases, graphic design services, business and performance coaching, technology support, referrals, lead generation opportunities, and management support.